Hi, I just wanted to touch on something. Um, I see it more so um, with Christians and even non-Christians um, as the end approaches, but we're not supposed to be compromising and our walk with the Lord. And um, I feel that, you know, it's an important issue because a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And um, if we know to do good and don't do it, to us it is a sin. And um, we're, you know, if we make compromises and excuses for little things, then those little things can compound or they can escalate to larger problems or sin. So um, back in, the, I made a video, the Lord gave me, sorry, a dream. Um, it was around December 3rd because I made the video then um, about not compromising um, my, you know, our, my walk, our walk with the Lord, and we need to be like a Daniel. Um, Daniel didn't compromise when um, the decree went out that they were supposed to worship um, the king and um, and not pray to any other gods. And Daniel, um, and as well as um, living, you know, him and the other, his friends were offered um, the king's food, the rich food, and he declined and chose to eat, um, you know, vegetables and water and um, to eat the foods that the Lord had shown him to eat. And um, the Lord blessed him and the Lord gave him understanding of dreams, gave him wisdom, gave him knowledge protected him in the lion's den and um, helped him to be success, success, I'm sorry, successful as far as giving him a position underneath the king. Um, regardless of uh, him serving his the true and living God. So if we don't compromise our walk with the Lord and we do the things that we know we ought to do and pray for the strength to continue in those things and to stay and to not do the things that's easy for our flesh to do then the Lord will continuously build that it'll be easier and easier um, to not stumble and fall or to fall into sin um, and to turn away from those things that are sinful. Um, but if we give into it, the world, the flesh, and the devil, and we and we compromise, then it becomes easier, and we get a little callous to those to those sins that may drag us down. Um, and we just end up thinking it's not a big deal. Um, what got me thinking about this was that, um, you know, even people that have been Christians a long time or that are in leadership, um, and even my husband made a comment, you know, the other, like a week or so ago, that, oh, everybody's, you know, he said everybody's selfish in some way, you know. And I'm like, well, I... I I try not to be. I, I don't really have a problem with being selfish. Maybe it's because I'm a mom with five sons and a husband, so it's I'm always last for everything, and that's fine with me. I just, I think part of being a mom is you're more giving and loving and protective, you know, so you care about everyone else first. I don't know. That's just how I feel. I That's not one of the issues that I have in my walk is you know, having problems with being selfish. Um, and then, like, other people that I've talked to, they're like, oh, well, you know, like, 
there's some money laying around at church or whatever and um, they're like oh well you, maybe you should pick it up and put it like in the cafe instead of letting it sit here so you know because it's just a temptation but my thought is everyone's a Christian there it's church so who's gonna take it you know um, they know it's not theirs and who would steal right I guess supposedly it could be a temptation to some people um, especially kids or teenagers that might not have a long or a strong walk with the Lord but um, so yeah that for a small kid they might not know any better they might just think hey I just found this you know but um, and then other people are like you know and then I see lots of Christians and this isn't to bash on anybody because that's not I'm just trying to encourage everybody to remain steadfast and immovable and to examine their own heart and to think about those small compromises um, that you yourself make and pray to the Lord and ask him to give you the strength and the wisdom to avoid those things so that they don't become bigger issues and um, cause you know stumbling in your walk with the Lord so um, but so as I was gonna lead into was my oldest son will be 30 in September and so um, when he was four so that's like almost 26 years ago we've been going back we started going back to church um, about that time I, it was about 26 25 years ago when I came back when I rededicated my life to the Lord after having backslid for a while um, so when he was four and my other two sons were two and one um, and then now I have two more so that are 16 and 20 years old so they've never grown up with knowing Santa so and it wasn't detrimental in any way <laughs> they weren't um, they didn't feel um, damaged or distraught because I never told them about Santa Claus um, because the conviction for me so that's where I believe that scripture also comes into play is for them to know good and they don't do it to them it is a sin for me I see um, Santa Claus the tooth fairy Easter Bunny um, the leprechaun for St. Patrick's Day um, what else um, I don't even know what else there is out there well definitely not Halloween um, I see those things as um, to me they're lies because why am I gonna why am I gonna deceive my children or you know have them believe a deception or a lie even if it's a white lie because there's no such thing as white lies a lie is a lie I had some scriptures up here um, sorry um, so lying and deceit what does the Bible teach what are some ways people may be guilty of lying and deceiving others what causes people to tell lies or deceive and what consequences can result we what must we do to overcome dishonesty and to learn to be honest and truthful what does the Bible teach about the dangers of falsehood so this person I haven't read this yet it says our son Tim's company gave him two free tickets to a Cubs game so he and I went a professional photographer asked if we could we would like to have our picture taken for free when we agreed he, he gave us a card telling us how to access our picture online but the site required us to pay twenty dollars to get a, any usable picture he took the picture for free but he knew what um, he knew people would think they would get a picture for free but when they went online they had to pay to see it or be able to access it to see a usable picture or print it out so he deceived them and Proverbs 6 I've mentioned this in a few different videos is there's seven things listed in um, Proverbs 6 16 to 19 that are abomination to God that that he hates 
and one of them's a lying tongue and a false witness that tells lies. So God hates a lying tongue. Um, definition of lying and deceit found in the word, 1 John 2.21, no lie is of the truth. But it's very, by its very nature, a lie is untrue or a falsehood, an untruth. Lie, a false statement made with a deliberate intent to deceive. Deceit, act or practice, intend to mislead by false appearance or a statement. So leading someone to believe something. So to me, and then the list goes on. I'll just leave this. So I, I didn't even read it all, but anyways. Um, so we know there is no Easter Bunny, and there is no Tooth Fairy, and there is no Santa Claus that rides around on a sleigh with reindeer that delivers presents on Christmas Day or morning to everyone. And um, I think the danger in that, personally, is that if we tell, if we lead our children to believe these white lies or falsehoods or um, deceptions for the sake of the entertainment, it's not only creating a way for the enemy to get in there and have them never believe you with what you share about the Lord or what they hear from the, the pastors at church or um, what they read in the word. They might just think it's a big fairy fairy tale. Um, it makes it, it, it opens the doors for the enemy to work in their mind, to wonder and doubt other things that they hear um, from you or others. Um, if you've if you've led them to believe in these things and so like I said for 26 years we never we stopped Santa and um, it did, wasn't detrimental to my sons we still had we still celebrated Christmas on Christmas Day although that's probably not the day that Jesus was actually born but we just use it to celebrate his birth and his coming to the world to give himself for us and um, and we give each other gifts. Um, I don't have, I haven't had a Christmas tree um, in probably like six or seven years. Um, I stopped the Christmas tree because I, I became, the Holy Spirit convicted me um, that it was like the Old Testament where it says that the pagans deck, decorated the trees with silver and gold and you know, and I didn't want it to become an idol. Um, because even though there's uh, symbolism that you can point to, like Jesus gives us everlasting life, like the evergreen tree, and he's the light of the world, like the lights on the tree, it's all good if, if you want to explain it. And But we had dogs, and they would have torn up the tree or the ornaments at, or um, thought it was outside to use the restroom, so we just stopped having the tree anyway. Anyways, um, with that said, they still get gifts. We write from Jesus or from mom and dad on them. And the Lord blesses us with the money to be able to buy them gifts. And so we, we bless them with the gifts. And so that's how we treat Christmas and Easter. We call it Resurrection Day. And um, sorry, someone keeps trying to call me. Hold on. Sorry, I apologize. My husband called so... I had to pause the video for a few minutes. Anyways, I also made, the Lord also gave me a different dream on J January 3rd about um, showing us to be faithful, a faithful witness for him and not lazy, selfish, easily swayed or compromising. Saving a lost sinner is the mission we have before us. So, um, yeah, so that's just my personal conviction but again I I um, you know when we when we say that you know some of these things are real and they find out eventually they're not then it just leads to other problems I think and it's the same as if we we um, say a white lie to somebody so we don't offend them 
And then later they they say something like, well, I wish you would have just been honest with me and told me so that they could have fixed something that they were doing or not do keep doing what they were doing um, because it offended people. So it's always best, honesty is always the best policy, policy and the Lord desires us to be honest and, and, um, and live a holy life. So to me, um, if you don't already know me, I've mentioned it before, but to me, lying is a really big sin. And um, even before I was, even when I was living with my boyfriend before I married my current husband, when we were living together um, 29 years ago, um, I still, the Holy Spirit still convicted me that I should be married. And, um, you know, I still have the conviction and um, the Lord was still calling me and drawing me to him. And, um, but I never stopped being dis, um, I never stopped being honest. I, w I was never dishonest. And dishonest people drove me crazy, in fact. And um, so, and people would always tell me, I don't know if it's true now, but they would say that they could tell I was honest just by my face. I don't know how they could say that, but, um, but yeah, it's to me, um, it's just a really big deal, um, in my opinion. Um, and he does tell us that liars are part of the lot that won't inherit the kingdom of God in Revelation um, 21. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. And in 1 Corinthians 6, um, where he talks about the different people that will not inherit the kingdom of the Lord. So, um, to me it's a big deal. And I just want to throw that out there so that if there's anything, not necessarily lying, but um, drinking too much or... Um, you know, um, taking things from your job because it's not a big deal. It's a salt shaker or it's, you know, it's a roll of tape or whatever, for examples. Or, um, or you're a hairdresser and you take a couple combs, you know, home. Or, you know, just those little things can, the enemy can use those to, make us think it's okay it's not a big deal and then eventually we start doing it more and more or with bigger things and then that's where you know the the devil deceives us that way and our mind deceives us and and we we st we start being a little like i said callous towards it and um it, and less convicted and so then eventually or if or if it's like with drinking or drugs you know it's okay because marijuana is legal here, or I'm, I'm allowed to drink beer, you know, the Bible says, or a glass of wine doesn't say anything. It's fine for some people, but for some people, it's not okay because a little, they can't stop it a little. They've had previous issues with that. So whatever it may be in our lives, we just need to um, check and examine ourselves and, um, if we see something that we know the Lord's not pleased with or that we're not, you know, we don't feel okay with the Holy Spirit convicts us of it, then we should pray and stop and pray and um, ask the Lord to um, get rid of that in our lives. So I hope this has been encouraging and exhorting. God bless.